friends. We're at Belmar. It's like six in the morning after a night shift. And we are going to show you Bugatta, Scarbosa, how you diagnose those on the EKGs. First, Dylan's going to draw you some pretty pictures. <laughs> piece to that earlier podcast about uh, diagnosing ischemia in an EKG with a left bundle. The same would hold true for a pacemaker. So the concept is that um, in a left bundle, you would expect to see a... No, that's not very good. You would expect to see something like that, where you have the QRS going in one direction, and the T wave and the ST segment going in the opposite direction. Maybe this is V2. With ischemia or uh, myocardial infarction, you would expect to see the QRS going down and then the ST segment going down as well. So they are inappropriately concordant. This is discordant, this is concordant. Or in a lateral lead where you had a dominant um, uh, R wave, and instead of this kind of appearance, which is normal, where the QRS is going up and the ST and the T are going down, you would see inappropriate concordance like that, where the ST segment and the QRS complex are going in the same direction. And the uh, Sagarabosa criteria further expand on that to point out that if um, this is discordant but greater than five millimeters here to here, that that's also ischemic. I just simply find that hard to remember. Uh, but I, I think if you, fundamentally, if you grasp this concept of inappropriate concordance, that you won't go wrong. And that's it. <laughs> That Dylan can draw. I can't draw, so I'm going to show you some EKGs. So, Scarbosa criteria here, there, in front of you. The first one, concordance, right? Second one is ST depression, really. And then the last one is big ST elevation, which you'll see sometimes in V1, V2, V3. It's important to remember Scarbosa is not sensitive and it is specific, though. Especially these two are really considered specific. This one less so. You can't call a STEMI with uh, with this with this, but these two you can call a STEMI often from the field and when you see them on EKG. So what does that look like when we look at an actual EKG of a patient? So this is a EKG of a patient, maybe with chest pain. You look and they've got an obvious left bundle, and you look for this concordance or ST depression. No concordance there. Right? Everything is going in opposite directions, so when you're looking at your QRS and the ST, they're going different directions. And this, in fact, is a normal left bundle branch block EKG. Now, let's say you have another patient, and you get this EKG. And you start looking, and boom, you see right there in lead one, okay, those are going the same direction, that's concordance. You look over here, there's no concordance obvious except boon when you get to V5, V6. You've got concordance again, and again an AVL. So this is a STEMI EKG in a left bundle. This is Garbosa criteria positive. And the thing about this is, this looks like a STEMI, right? This, these these uh, ST segments here, they both look ischemic, so you're gonna call that from the field. Positive Scarbosa. Next one, right? This guy's got a pacemaker, so that that definitely looks like a uh, left bundle because of a pacemaker. You start reading for ischemia, discordant, that looks okay. These are discordant, even though that looks big, that's just discordant. Then you get to the anterior leads and you say, hey, you know what? That ST segment right there is going the same direction as the QRS. And that there is enough to call this a STEMI looking EKG. Right? So this was a STEMI in a patient with a pacer. Here's another one, right? This guy doesn't have a pacer, or this gal doesn't have a pacer. You start reading, say they've got chest pain. You're looking for ischemia. Oh, over here, there we go. That looks ischemic, even though this person's got a left bundle. 
that looks like a STEMI on a left bundle EKG. So now you've seen a few examples of sclerosis criteria. We're going to talk about Brugada syndrome. This is one of those really scary causes of syncope. And as you can see, there's three types. This is the one that you need to burn into your cortex because this EKG is a slam dunk for Brugada syndrome, and that's type 1. So there's actually three types of EKG you, you, you see, and type 2 and 3 are actually not diagnostic. You actually have to have some non-clinical criteria to really call this Brugada syndrome. And most of the time, these people need to go to EP lab with a cardiologist to really tell if they've got Brugada or if this is just a false finding. So you can't slap a uh, EKG on a guy who's drinking lemonade, see this, and call him Brugada syndrome. This, however, this is a pretty diagnostic EKG. And the other thing to know about this is that this is sometimes transient. So sometimes you'll see this, sometimes you will not. Let's take a look at a few of these. Uh, so this is an EKG. Let's say young gal comes in after a syncopal episode, non-exertional, wasn't straining. And immediately when you look at this, you can see it's pretty normal right, you know, you see P waves, and then you look over here, and this is where you really look at Brugada. The sweet spot for Brugada is in your V1 through V6 leads, and really in your V1 through V3 leads are the ones that you're really looking at. And that there, that's a pretty characteristic pattern, right? You got this big ST segment that kind of goes and swoops downward and up, and that's a Brugada type pattern. Here's another one, okay, again, person comes in with syncope, we're looking V1, V2, V3. You see that little pattern there, it looks almost like a yin-yang type sign. That's a Brugada looking EKG. So those are type 1. This is a little more subtle. We've probably all seen EKGs that look like this at some point. Uh, things that look a little bit like a right bundle branch block. And here, this is really what we look at when we're calling something a type 2 Brugada type syndrome where you've got this little saddle back. It looks like you can just sit down on that and uh, be comfortable. So that's a saddle type 2 looking Brugada EKG. Not diagnostic, but highly suggestive. Okay. Again, another EKG. Little saddle appearance right there in V2. Right. Otherwise, it looks like it might possibly be a right bundle branch block. Person with syncope, you see this type of thing. You have to have a little bit of a higher suspicion that that person might have Brugada syndrome. Okay, that's it, friends. Hopefully this is helpful.